sinking like a ship Trouble on your lips Murder in your song Song of the moon man Love is coming poem is called After Dark. <laughs> I've had them all in here. Sinatra said to me, he said, Jack, he said, Jack, he said, Jack, it's like this. The biggest tip. Real stars, real. They don't make them like that no more. No, sir, nope. The taxi driver goes on and on and on and on, misses my stop and glides into the park. After Dark. Johnny Carson, mean mother, gave me no tip at all. With all his f***ing money, man. But Garland, she was a real star. Real. They don't make them like that no more. No, sir, nope. After dark, at midnight, it's a full moon. And the stars are out. Like we never used to see them. Maybe he sees the sweat on my brow. Yeah, she was great, I say. Can we go now? I'm not a really, like, a negative, pessimistic person, you know, so everything I see is, like, black and gloomy. There's also an awful lot of humour in the poems as well. And I think, you know, there's, there's moments of pessimism sort of um, contrasted with, uh, you know, with the sort of moments of humour. I think you'll find that all the way through it. Maybe the, the latter poems maybe get a little, a little serious, but... <laughs> well, actually, you talk about the humour, the one in yeah. the, the After Dark one, yeah. um, which is sort of the taxi driver one, I suppose you can describe it as. Yeah. Um, that's, I mean, I, I've, I've been to New York and I, yeah. <laughs> I seem to have experienced The way that, they obviously. talk and they, and they don't stop talking and they go on and on and they tell you about who they've had in their taxis and who they've had. And this particular one, um, written about one night, I was sort of, um, I was coming home from somewhere in a taxi, and the taxi driver, without any ex explanation, took a turn into Central Park, and it was in the middle of the night. And he just drove round and round <laughs> in Central Park, and I was getting very, very w worried, of course, as one would be in this sort of situation, you know. And he just sort of drove around Central Park, sort of talking incessantly about different people he'd had in his cab, and I thought, you know, <laughs> oh, God. How much was it there? Yes. <laughs> I just want to pay and get out. I have actually have a stockpile of material and poems that I've been writing for, uh, for many years before I started fashioning sort of words into songs and into, uh, working with David Ball. I used to, you know, I used to sort of, sort of um, do the type of shows where I used to recite sort of um, poetry I, or, or more of a dialogue type of, um, type of thing and then they took gradually turned more into songs um, and I think it was gaining confidence I think to actually release anything in a book form you know I know there's always this this stigma attached to people who people who sing or people who are in music or in, in pop music or whatever bringing out books of poems you know people tend to go oh, oh my god you know <laughs> oh, no <laughs> so I think it was just gaining the, the confidence and and having so much stuff that I'd stockpiled and over the years I just wanted to like look through them and select a few of the things that I, you know, that I quite liked or that showed a development in, in what I'd been writing and that, and that went together in a type of a theme as well that was maybe relevant for, for now. But what can you express in a, in a poem that you couldn't express in your lyrics before then? I mean, what's the... Well, I think, I mean, I, I think the two tend to sort of like, you know, uh, um, overlap anyway, really. I mean, a lot of the songs that I write are very, you know, they could be seen as maybe poetical or whatever I think though, I th though, though you know sometimes you know sometimes I think maybe you're a bit more restricted by a song you're a bit more restricted by a um, you know a, a tune as it were and, and I do tend to sometimes I you know there's 
two, two separate types of styles of writing. I write for a song sometimes, particularly for a song that would, you know, that will sort of um, fit into a rhythm or uh, and, and other things, you know, will work better as um, I can express better in, in poems. I can sort of, you know, <laughs> be a bit more indulgent, I suppose. <laughs> You mentioned you mentioned the themes and, um, yeah. and probably being indulgent at the same time. But what, what have the themes been in, in this book? In this book, I think it's like um, it is a type of, I suppose, an, an elegy to the past, sort of to the I suppose the end of the seventies, the beginning of the eighties, and the uh, I suppose the change in morality coming with things like with things like AIDS, and now we have the sort of um, nefarious clause twenty eight thing and. Um, it's a rather disgusting little, potentially very dangerous clause. It's meant to sort of, um, it's sort of meant to sort of curb the promotion of homosexuality. And I think I think they say, though, how anybody can promote homosexuality is beyond me. I think you need Saatchi, even Saatchi and Saatchi couldn't promote homosexuality um, in a world that's very much geared towards um, heterosexuality. We already mentioned sort of the AIDS-induced morality that has come in the last five to eight years. And the, 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 the worst, much worse, worse disease, or as bad a disease as, as, as AIDS, should I say, and that is the sort of horrible creeping conservatism that sort of, uh, as well, sort of, you know, both of maybe, may, maybe one is, I don't know, they've both come hand in hand. And just like sort of AIDS will probably take maybe 10, 20 years to find a cure for, well, it'll, it'll take another, it'll take a good 10, 20 years to also find a cure for this conservative, um, conservatism that seems to be infecting e infecting everything well most of the things in the book are not are not really sort of ex fantasies they're, they're mostly things from personal e e e experience i'm not just a voyeur i'm a participator um and you know i am a voyeur as well of course but i am very much a participator or have been a pa participator in the things that, the, that i write about from my experience um i mean i could get i'm terribly jaded really though i i, I could sort of go on about the things that sort of you know, you, I mean, obviously, you, I suppose you want sort of sexual, you know, things that sort of sexually interest me or whatever. But um, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm desperately trying to think, is there anything left, you know? <laughs>